Okay, so on with the next part of skinning my lightsaber. We've got our ring that is now going to be the basis for our skin, at least the hole inside, uh, for almost all of the lightsaber. So one of the things to consider is this is going to be a skin. It slides on here. So if you've got a skin on here and you're swinging the lightsaber, you don't want the skin sliding off and your lightsaber to go flying, right? So we we need some ways to secure it. And this was my thought. Now I could, when I make the skin, make a rib that snaps on here. And by the way, as I showed in the earlier video, these two parts unscrew. So I could make a skin with a deep ridge that fits this groove that I don't have to worry about sliding over, unscrew it, slide it on, screw it together, and the ridge will hold. But I'd like to also make it a little more secure than that. And if we look at the toy one, uh, this was a cap that screws on, and this is where you put the blades in, the slide-out blades. And we want to kind of keep this Obi-Wan uh, pummel look, right? Um, but I want it to screw on. And this piece here, that's the speaker's right here for the lightsaber, so this piece kind of protects it. And you'll notice there's holes here for the sound to come out, right? But this is threaded on this inside, too. Um, so my thought is, let's 3D print a part that can deal with these threads. So I measured the thread pitch and the pitch. I would have expected this to be one, it's metric. I would have expected this to be a 1.5 thread pitch. It's actually not. Cali when I calipered the distance between the two threads, it's actually a one uh, pitch. It's one pitch, not 1.5. So you want, that's what calipers are good for. If you're gonna make something that with threads uh, and you want it to match, you need to know your pitch, all right? So I measured that and it's basically one. So the idea is I want something similar to screw on here and this will keep the skin from sliding off. Uh, but I don't wanna cover these holes either. So I don't want the threaded part to go in side of this and block off these holes that allow the speaker uh, sound to come out, right? So. What we want to do now is we're not going to try to make this part threaded and everything all at once. Once again, trial and error. What we need to do, is we need to make a piece that will thread into here and fit nicely, right? Not loose to where the, the threads won't hold the skin from sliding off. So the first step is we're going to do that and then we'll move on to talking about how to create this. One thing about rounded parts is when you get toward the top, because the layers have to move in so much, you, you get this, these rings, right? It doesn't, it isn't totally smooth. Here you can see it's smooth, although you can see the layer lines, but as you get more of an angle, you start to get that. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this look as much as possible, but I'm gonna make this flat. One reason is, if you wanna set your lightsaber down, this is rounded, and you wanna set it on the butt, it won't sit on a table. So I'm going to make some changes, make this flat. This will get rid of this and make it look nicer. Um, we'll keep a, probably keep a rounded bevel look here um, and try to recreate this thing. doesn't need to be hollow. Um, and uh, you know what? I'll, I'll bring the original toy part into uh, the CAD program and show you how to import parts, STLs, that you can use as a basis. And um, we'll recreate this look. Uh, in a 3D printable part that's threaded and will thread into this piece here and give us some uh, strength. All right, so that is my plan and let's get to work in Tinkercad to see how to do it. Okay, so on to the next part and things get a little more complicated in Tinkercad, but we have some cool objects that will help us accomplish what we need to do. So we've got our ring, we're gonna set that aside Again, we do things in pieces and make prototypes in pieces to test them on fitting onto the saber before we make the whole part only to find we've got adjustments all over the place. So it's better to bite this off in pieces, all right? So as I said, I wanna make a pummel that screws to the bottom of the um, lightsaber. As I said, I measured the threads, the pitch is 0.1, uh, the distance from the let me just zoom in here and pretend this is the, the ring on the butt on the lightsaber. As you know, we had a hole here for the audio to come out and I measured with my calipers from the hole to the top and that's seven millimeters. So we don't want our threaded object to be 
deeper than seven millimeters, okay? Let me go home here. So there's a really cool object in Tinkercad that allows you to make threaded things within limitation. Um, if you've got a super fine thread, your 3D printer just can't uh, produce threads too thin, but the threads on that pummel end are uh, a pitch of one in metric, all right? So that helps. We can print that kind of thread. If it was 0.5, we probably couldn't print a good thread there. Anyway, so you go up to your shapes, click search, put in thread, and here's a very cool object. We're going to drag that to our build plate. I'm going to clear out my search. And this allows you to adjust parameters here um, for the, uh, the screw or the threaded piece. What you don't want to do ever when you're messing with this is scale things using things here. As you see, it just it doesn't change. It winds up stretching things rather than changing to the dimensions here you want. So you never want to do that, all right? Don't do that. You won't have a good time. All right, so as I said, I measured from the hole to the top, so we will, we know we want this to be no more than seven millimeter, and I'll show you how to do that. Again, you don't want to do it here. You see how it's stretching the threads? It won't keep the proper pitch. The pitch is not changing over here, all right? So what we'll do is we'll do that with rotations, but not yet. We need to get other things right. So I also took calibers and me measured the inside let me go to this as an example and measure the inside diameter of that butt end on the lightsaber with the threads in it. Now, because it has threads that stick out slightly, I was only able to measure between the tip of the thread and the tip of the thread, and I came out with 29 millimeter. So if I was to set my screw here to 29 millimeter, it definitely would be too small because I'm setting it to the outside diameter of the thread, not the shaft. So we want the threads to go in the threads on this. So we know it's 29 millimeter on the tip of the threads here. So we need to make this a little bit bigger than 29 millimeter. And I'm pretty sure with a thread pitch of one, we're probably gonna be around 0.7. So I'm gonna make the diameter 29 0.7 in diameter. Okay? And there we go. We want to, now you see the steps, we want to make it as smooth as possible, so we're going to increase our, increase our segments and wait till it's done. And there we go. So now we've got a threaded piece where the threads will go into the threads on the ring at about 29.7. Now again, you'll be playing with this number. You'll probably print several prototypes until you get it right so that you've got enough thread going in the threads of the of the ring on the end of the lightsaber, uh, but not too tight. You can't screw it or not too loose that it, it, it doesn't function well, all right? So again, I said the pitch was one. It wasn't 1.5. I was really surprised at that for a metric thread. The pitch is one. So we're going to set our pitch now, hit enter, and that will set the pitch of the threads. And there we go. That should match perfectly now. So how high is our item? 5.75. We want it to be, uh, we want it to go as deep as possible, have as many threads catch, but not too much to block those holes I showed in the previous video. The way you make it longer is rotations. See that? So we're going to rotate this maybe to there and check, oh, 7.75, a little too long. Make this six rotations, five rotations. Oops, you gotta, it takes a minute. Six rotations I think would have done it. You got to wait for it to update. 6.75, that's good enough. We're under the seven that would block the holes for the sound, and we've got it as deep as possible. Now I'm going to tell you what these other things do tip scale. This is the tip of the thread. You can make that, and of course, you can make that longer so you have more lead on the thread. You can make that super long so it's a very fine taper on the thread, or you can, actually that's squared off the thread, and you don't want that. It'll make it hard to screw in. 
So we want tip scale to be something reasonable. I forget what the default was now, but that looks pretty good. You could bring this in until it's all the way on the shaft. I think this was at, was it at zero? Yeah, it was at zero. So the, there, the tip starts at the shaft and comes all the way out. So we're just going to leave that at that. Now the other thing to realize is we said the pitch, and that's the depth of this, the width, the height or depth of this thread, um, and how deep it goes into the part, right? So this thread scale allows you to slightly make these threads a little less deeper and a little less width. So this allows you to compensate. Since this is the exact uh, pitch and we print this, this may be too tight a wedge into the threads on the ring. So we want to take this a little bit down. I'm going to go 0.9, which then will make the threads a little less deep and a little less wide and allow some tolerance there instead of being a super tight screw in fit. All right, so basically we're done. We've just made this threaded piece. I'm gonna export this to my project. I'm gonna call it test. By the way, you see the names it's coming up with? Let me explain that in here. I'm gonna call this test thread and save it as a STL. So when you first create a project, let me save here. This is something I probably should have shown in the beginning. As you see, I've got many design projects, but if I want to make a new project and click 3D Design, it just makes up these names. I don't know what an amazing jack is, but you can click this and say Pummel, right, or whatever you want to call it. And then when you save your STL, it'll save it as this name. All right, I'm going to go back here and delete this blank one. Just show you how to do it a little bit. Delete on that gear icon. Okay, we'll go back into our project. Say, you can wait for it to render and draw this. I don't, I just click Tinker. Tinker, Tinker, Tinker. It's loading my, th see the thread is very complex and you know, you got a server in the back end doing all this, these calculations. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to adjust and load. So we've got our part, we have we exported it. So now we're gonna pull up uh, Cura again, all right? We're gonna open our folder where we saved it. That's not it. And we're gonna grab our test thread and throw it on there. Now this is where, again, you can CAD something up and it's a solid in CAD, but when you're bringing things into uh, into uh, your slicer, things change. So we're just gonna go ahead and slice this and I'm gonna talk a little bit about strength and infill and those kinds of things. So we've sliced this and we can start to look at how it's gonna print. And as you see, the walls are going in and out and in and out to do the threads, you see that? And we want some strength in these threads. We don't want the infill to be part of the threads like you're seeing here, right? So this is where you, things get important. Now for a prototype, just to test your threads, this is fine. You can go ahead and print this, it'll be faster. But this is where you start making some adjustments. Later when you're gonna wanna do a production of this, I would probably set the walls to six and let's see what that does. So I set the walls to six. Now look, I've got all kinds of walls. You can see when the thread prints, it's walls. Six is gonna be a little too much for this don't need six so let's try four walls and slice that we just want to make sure that the threads are not going to get comp that looks pretty good I kind of like that all right and then you can see our infill our infill is a little light I think I probably had that set from something else so we're gonna to go to infill and make everything default here except for the grid I want I like grid instead of gyroid by default there we go now we've got a good infill so the top surface and the bottom surface has enough uh, you can't again you can't print in thin air so if there was no infill and this was a hollow part when the printer to goes to put on the top layer like this it'll have to make this transition with nothing supporting it it'll try to print in thin air now some distances you can get away with depending on your cooling fan, filament cooling fan on your printer, and you can get away with that. Others you can't, so that's 
somewhat what infill does. It makes the part stronger, it's not hollow, and also provides support for that top layer as it's drawing that back and forth. So this is a this is pretty good. It's a good infill, not too much, not too little, and uh, basically we've got our part. So I'm going to print this and we're going to come back, check it out, and see how it fits. Okay, so we're back, and as you see, I, I wound up printing several different um, uh, prints, prototypes, before I got this thread to match. And um, basically what happened was, uh, these I did before I started the video showing you how to do it in Tinkercad. In Tinkercad, basically what I told you was the pitch was one, 29.7, and a .9 adjustment on the threads to make them a little bit thinner. And that came out perfect. I mean, it screws in here perfect, it's solid. So I showed that in the video. I get. I told you I put those numbers in, and that's because I knew what to do based on uh, uh, actually doing it. You can see it's a very nice part. It screws in well, screws all the way down flush, doesn't block the holes, exactly what we wanted to accomplish. So we've got our threaded piece. But to get there, I did all kinds of uh, prototypes. This was a .8 thread pitch. It was too tight and not deep enough. This was a 1.5, just to make sure I didn't measure wrong, as you can see. Screwing it in tore the threads off. Um, I forget what this was. Uh, I think the diameter was too much. It was I started with 30 instead of 29.7, uh, etc., etc. So as you see, this is why you want to do things in pieces. Had I made the whole pummel and this part, I'd have to. I, I would have wasted a bunch of plastic because this didn't fit. So I, again, I just did the threaded part until I got it and it fit. And I wish I could do this with one hand, I almost could, but it threads really, one second. Pardon me. As you see, it threads on really well. There's no slop at all. It's gonna be very secure. It'll tighten down. And so now we have our thread piece that we can then build our pummel on and we know we're good to go all right so that is how that went and i kind of showed you how to use threaded parts and we'll continue on with the pummel design I'm not sure whether i'm going to make this part two or continue but we'll see in the editor needless to say um, we got this part done and that's how you do threaded parts in tinkercad and translate that to cura and then your 3d printer